and welcome to a new episode of Digital Coffee Marketing Brew. And I'm your host, Brett Dyster. But this week, we're going to be talking about everybody's favorite, but not really that favorite thing is SEO, because we all need to know about it, but we all don't really understand it very well or don't like it. It's like kind of like the back end things that no one really wants to do anymore. But with me, I have Philip here, and he is super passionate about SEO. That's why I have him here to actually help us out. And he's been working for years. He started with web development and found the technical aspect of SEO super exciting. So he transitioned over there and he's just a great guest to have on the show. So welcome to the show, Philip. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Man. First question is all my guest is, are you a coffee or tea drinker? I am a huge coffee drinker, but I have recently transitioned into decaf. Uh, so I don't drink uh, caffeine coffee. So it's also funny to try and explore that area of coffee for sure, because there's not as much decaf coffee as, as opposite. Well, yes, because most coffee lovers call it basically fake coffee because there's no caffeine. In it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right. I gave a brief introduction to who uh, your expertise and who you are, but can you give a little bit more to our audience? Of course. So I, as, as you mentioned, I've always been into web development ever since I was a very young kid. I remember changing PHP files all the way back and be fascinated about how a line of text could basically become something visual. And, and I spent a lot of years trying to perfect that part. I just love the technical aspect of it. And that also what made me slowly transition into the technical part of SEO until I took on the content part and on page as well also. I just love the technical part where you can basically build a foundation that can empower your content and, and still keep it technical. And there's so many small things you can twist and tweak and, and everything matters in, in, in the long run. Nice. And so the landscape of SEO has changed. I mean, it's always changing. Google always updates their new parameters and everybody tries to scramble to figure out how to do it. So what are some of the best practices for creating really good SEO for your brand's website? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. There, there are a lot of things. And it's funny you're saying it because we had like a core update from Google just finished now, but there's another one running at, uh, at the moment, <laughs> which is a review update. So it's crazy. Just a year, it's a couple of years ago, we had maybe four core updates a year. And I think we've had four or five in the last couple of months. So it's really, oh, wow. yeah, it's like insane at the moment. But I think like, uh, I always say that there are two aspects of SEO. There is the, the technical part and then the, your content. And your technical part is basically like a structure of a house. It's so important to empower your content. And here you need to ensure that you have your images optimized. You have a fast hosting, you have a fast DNS. Uh, you're using caching plugins and all these elements. They're so important to get in order. And they might be difficult, but it's it's like a one-time thing. Once they are up and running, you don't have to think about it again. That's definitely one part. And that's the more, I would say, easy part. Because the difficult part is definitely the content. Because with the content, there's just so many aspects of it. Of course, it's important that you write original content. And as you probably heard, unless you've been living under a rock, AI is everywhere. And you can, you can generate content with AI. And it's completely fine if you do so. But... My recommendation is definitely to heavily edit it, heavily have a human in and just like read it through and edit it because often it's just generic content. It's a good start, it's a good draft, but it's just generic content. It's summarized from the web and it doesn't bring anything new to the web. So it's so important to, to add that aspect and then add original images, use your own knowledge and add small tips that shows that you know what you're talking about in the industry and then use your own images if you can because what it's all about is bringing something new that Google hasn't seen before. Because if you're using AI and just summarizing the web and publishing it, sure, it will give you some value, but it will not give you the same value as if you actually bring something original to Google. So it's so important when you do this. And we can, of course, dive more into content part because you need to do your research part and then you need to write your content and then you need to optimize it. So there are so many layers within this as well. Got you. I mean... Next question is, is how is, besides the content side of it, how is AI changing like the SEO side of it? Because it's affected everything in the marketing industry. Everybody's talking about it. Exactly. Yeah. And it's, it's crazy. Just the other day, I don't know if you've heard about, but there was something called the SEO heist where there was a website that completely copied another website. They just took their sitemap 
and then they just AI generated content for each single article and they were actually beating the original content on Google. So of course, Google is also constantly changing because of this. So AI is definitely changing this, this pace and the speed that we're generating content. You can basically spin up a website and write 100 articles in, in a single day and then you have a website with some content. It's not good content, but it's okay content to get started. So AI is definitely doing that part. But I will say that there are also some positive things with AI. I think that I'm testing at the moment is trying to optimize my internal links, for example. And this is when you link from one post to another post. So for example, I'm trying to test with, with, uh, with ChatGPT, where I give it some URLs, and then I asked it to suggest what can I interlink in between, suggest some relevant anchor text and so on. So I definitely see AI being a productivity tool for, for SEOs, and, and I think it will continue to be so. It will never be able, okay, I cannot say never, but I think it's far into the future until we reach a point where we'll actually be able to generate original content, because for it to be able to generate original content, it needs to do its own experience and own experiments and stuff. Uh, and I think we're far ahead from that. So it's, it's definitely interesting with AI. I don't think you should be afraid of it. I think you should just embrace it and, and use it as a productivity tool because it, it can really help you in a lot of phases for sure. Mm. And are we seeing more SEO caring more about the content side of it and different types of content? Or is it still primarily just the written portion that matters the most? I think like what I'm seeing now about SEOs is that of course they're focused on, on the content part, but they're really also focused on everything surrounding the content building authority, showing Google that they know what they're talking about by trying to build links, of course, on other websites, but also creating author profiles using something called schematics, which is basically a way of showing Google your content in a specific way. So for example, if you've written a review and you give it a, sim let's say you give it three out of five stars, then out in the search results, you can actually see these three out of five stars, that's schematic. So I definitely see people still care more about the content. They try to make it more original, original images because that's how you stand out from AI. Because AI, is, they can also generate images, but it's still fairly easy to separate an AI generated image from an original taken image with a with a camera. So that's definitely what I see that that people are focused on. Uh, so it's it's still important to have the backlinks, and so I mean. How do you create the good backlinks? Because I'm pretty sure you can create any backlink, but I'm pretty sure Google, I guess, prioritizes some over others. So how do you create the ones that Google will prioritize? Yeah, great question. And it, it's funny because Google, they publicly said the other. It's it's some week ago, they, they said that uh, backlinks are no longer a top three ranking factor. And there was a study conducted by a company called Authority Hacker where they basically managed to rank a worse article just because they had more backlinks. So it's definitely still super important. And the thing about backlinks is that every single domain has something called a domain rating. And the domain rating is between zero and 100. And the higher it is, the more trustworthy your website is. And you increase your domain rating by getting these important backlinks. So if you get, for instance, a backlink from Forbes, that's an incredible backlink to get from your website. Whereas when you get a backlink from a very spammy website that can negatively affect your website. So what's super important is to analyze the domain you're about to pursue a backlink from. What is their domain rating looking like? And there are a lot of free tools you can use. Ahrefs has a free tool, for example. You can just Google domain rating uh, and then you get a lot of tools where you can just enter the domain. And you need to look for the spam score. It should be below 3%. And then you need to look at domain rating. And domain rating, you basically just wants to be higher than your own. But of course, the higher, the better. And another way you can do it is that you can take your own domain and then you can compare it to a competitor using a tool like Ahrefs again or something called Key Search. And here you can see what backlinks does your competitors have that you don't have already. And then you can try to pursue them, reach out to them. And here there are different methods. Either you can suggest a guest post that you can write on their website but you can also look for broken links on their website. So let's say that you have an article about a specific dog breed, and we can see that this backlink that you're pursuing, they have an article about it where they link to another article, but this article doesn't exist anymore. Then you can basically swoop in and suggest your article for this article, and then you get a backlink this way. And at the same time, you're also helping the website 
because instead of linking to a page that doesn't exist, then they're actually linking to your page that exists. But there are a lot of different methods, but I think those two are the most successful ones. Got you. And I mean, for those that are just getting started into trying to figure out SEO, like what are the top tools that you recommend for them to actually use? Because I'm pretty sure there's a ton of them out there and not everyone is going to be a good one. No, for sure. There are hundreds of SEO tools, almost a new one every single day. It's really, it's crazy. But I think like uh, the, the basis that you base, you have to do is to set up Google Analytics and Google Search Console. Those two tools you have to set up and it's entirely free to set up. So I think everyone should do that. And in Google Search Console, you can basically see everything that's happening on Google with your website. So you can see all the impressions you get on Google, all the clicks and so on. And when you're ready to take it a step further, then there is a tool called Key Search, which is super cheap. I think it costs $17 per month. And here you just get so many SEO tools and it's definitely my recommendation. It's there are two like major tools in the industry called SEMrush and Ahrefs, but they are also super expensive and it's not everyone who needs all that functionality. So a tool like Key Search, which costs, I think it's $17 per month, you get so much functionality and you can analyze your website, your competitors, you can do keyword research where you find specific keywords you want to rank for and so on. So that's definitely my recommendation. Mm. And are key, keyword search is still valuable right now? Because I know... I know everything's changing. I know Google's trying to say backlinks don't care. I'm pretty sure they're trying to say is keyword search kind of care, but they don't really care. They're trying to get, I think they're trying to get to the content side of it, but how important should you create a really good keyword search? It, it's still definitely important, but as you say, it has changed a lot because a couple of years ago, you could just find a lot of long tail keywords, which had low competition, high search volume, just write content for them. But today there's there's a lot of elements like topical map and consensus that you need to focus on. So this means that you can basically still do keyword research where you find long tail keywords, but they need to be interlinked. They need to be related to each other. And you ensure this by creating what's called a topical map. So a topical map is basically where you have all your categories on your website. And then under each category, you have subcategories. And then you basically do a keyword research for each subcategory and you just exhaust that subcategory for subjects. And then you write the content for all those subjects because that basically tells Google that whatever people are searching within that subject, then you have an answer. And that means that Google sees you as an authority within that subject. So that's why it's super important to change the method a little bit about how we do keyword research from just some years ago until today. That's super important to do it that way because it's still relevant and you can still find a lot of great keywords doing it this, this way. Hmm. And how do PR pros and marketers try to optimize for mobile? Cause I'm pretty sure you'll see some websites that are like, this really isn't optimized for my phone. So how do I get that optimized part? Because it's not just the computer website and just looking at the computer screen, you also have tablets, you also have mobile phones. You're eventually going to have AR glasses with, the new AR glasses from Google, I mean, from Apple. So how do you, how do you get that optimization specifically for mobile first? Exactly. Yeah. And, and you said the keywords there, mobile first, because we have been designing websites for desktop first for so many years now and this, everyone still does it, but especially in 2024, UX is going to be a huge ranking factor for Google. This also means that you should start thinking of your website as mobile first and desktop second. Of course, confirm this with your Google Analytics data. If you have a majority of desktop viewers, then focus on desktop and secondary mobile. But the most of us should focus on mobile first. And depending on your setup at the moment, either you can, of course, optimize your current setup where you switch between mobile tablet and see what you need to optimize. Otherwise, you can go out and buy a super cheap theme at the Theme Forest or something like that because they are already optimized for you. And then you can basically go from there. So it, it really depends on, on your current situation. Because if you're using a website like WordPress, sorry, a CMS like WordPress, then you have this way of you can change between a, whether you see your website on a tablet, on mobile, and then you can see how it looks and if it looks great or you need to optimize anything. Mm. And should marketers and PR pros go through their website as a user and try to, because I'm, I'm pretty sure there's a lot of bounce rates in different types of things. And you can look at Google Analytics and figure out where the bounce rates are, bounce rates are but should they also do that as well and figure out like where the pain points are from, from your website, just so you 
know yourself, you're like, okay, maybe we should change this. Maybe we should do that. For sure. Yeah, for sure. You should definitely put yourself in, in the reader's mind and then ask questions to yourself. Basically, am I answering the search intent fast enough? Because we tend to write a lot of fluff in the beginning because we want them to stay on the page, but we have to just answer the question immediately, whatever it is that they are searching for, and then add all the, the extra information afterwards. But what you can also do is you can install something called Microsoft Clarity, which is also a free tool from Microsoft. And here you can record all your visitors on your website so you can see how they use it. And often you will find mistakes and, and minor things you need to change. And especially look at scroll depth, because if you see that people doesn't scroll that long and they just leave your website, which results in a high bounce rate, then it means that you don't answer the query fast enough. And then you definitely need to rearrange Often you just have to rearrange your second section to your first section and then you have sold the issue because we really tend to first describe an overview, an overall picture of whatever it is that we're writing about and then we answer the actual query. So just swap those around and then often you are you have optimized 80% of, of the issues. Hmm. And for local businesses, how do they actually optimize it for the local SEO? Because we have the the internet SEO, I guess, is the best way of saying it, where it's everywhere, but then you have local. Yeah. So how do you localize that effectively? Yeah. For, for local SEO, the Google business profile is crucial. You simply need a Google business profile. It's so important. And the ranking factor here are also reviews. So as much as you can, every time you've been with a client, then ensure that they give you a review because the more reviews, and of course, the better reviews, the easier it is for you to rank on near me keywords uh, so that's super important whether you have a restaurant because people always search restaurant and city or restaurant near me because google have their location so that's definitely so so important to get a google business profile and then optimize that as well ensure that you write all the i don't remember if it's 1000 2000 words you can use to describe your business but ensure that you write everything and if you have a restaurant and add your menu if you're a service provider, then add all your services with prices and everything. The more you can fill into your Google business profile, the better, because the easier it is for Google to understand what it is that you provide. And you also just, you basically have a broader span to reach out to people in wherever it is that you have your services or, or if you're a restaurant. So that's super, super important. Mm. And also have like for your menu, have the pictures of the food yeah. as well. So people can actually look at it. So true. Exactly. You can also get the the guests and stuff to upload pictures of the food as well. So yeah, that is super important. The more you can fill into your Google business profile, the better. Uh, so encourage user generated content with your own content to actually like fill it out. It's basically. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. User generated content is gold at the moment. It's perfect. And is is search is voice search really that important anymore? I know it was like building itself, but it feels like Google, Amazon, and Apple are kind of good, like shying away from it a little bit more. I know Google's trying to put Google Voice with Bard now. They're trying to use AI with it. So is is voice search still important, or is that kind of not really important anymore? Oh, it's such a good question. I, I don't see it like explode as it did just a couple of years ago when all the assistants came out. It's still relevant and you can still get a lot from it because if you're optimized for search, you're basically also, no, sorry, for, for voice search, you're basically also optimized for when people, they write questions. Because just like a couple of years ago, we searched different than we do today. We searched keywords back then and now we search an entire question. Uh, and we basically search almost the same way as we ask a Google Assistant. So it's still important to be optimized for search, but I don't see it explode in the same way as it did for, for some time ago. Do you think AI will infiltrate more voice search than anything else because it will better understand your questions? Google Assistant is still the best one out there, but will AI help with those voice search queries? Yeah, I think for sure they're, they're testing the, the search generative uh, answers at the moment. And I don't know whether they're going to roll it out eventually. Maybe they will, maybe they won't, because they're getting mixed results based on it. But I think if they if they manage to nail it, uh, they can definitely give better results than just giving the generic websites. And then they just have to mix it, because of course, if the website owners doesn't get any traffic because of this, then they don't want to create content. And this SGE and AI in general doesn't work without content. 
So they definitely need to find a balance, and that's going to be the tough part. Mm -hmm. And where do you see the future of SEO going? Do you see AI content still some keyword searching like becoming the future of it? Do you see Google just going somewhere completely different? We have no idea where they're going because it seems to be their plan most of the time. Where do you see it going? Yeah, it's a great question. I think in the there's like the long perspective, and then there's in the near future. And and in the near future, there'll be so much content generated by AI, and Google need to figure out what content to crawl because they can't continue crawling billions of pages all the time um, because there's so many new pages with AI. So they definitely need to figure that part out. But what I think will be super important already next year is UX. It's something that's been neglected from a lot of websites. And it's so important because you need a great user experience. And as Google is using all of these user inputs to ensure that the website is great and it's supposed to rank well, then UX just becomes so important. Google wants people to interact with the websites, fill out forms and use elements on the websites because it shows that it's a great website. So that's definitely something that's super important. And I think a funny theory in, in the long perspective, it's like mm, either we're going to change completely and we are all going to have this personalized AI system. We can just ask things that knows everything about us and the world. Or then, I don't know, it's, it's really difficult to, to predict, but uh, it's interesting because I think the technology is not going to be what's breaking everything. It's going to be us humans, whether we can adapt fast enough or, or what the, our methods of finding information is going to be. That's definitely going to be the deciding factor. So in the near future, it probably is going to be trustworthiness and trustworthiness and authority that's going to probably take precedent besides the looking pretty, but the yeah. trustworthiness and authority because of AI. Correct. Exactly. Yeah, that's, that's super correct. Because AI can't just, of course, they will probably be able to figure out a way, but Google will also figure out a way out to stop that as well. But but getting backlinks is something that you can't just generate. That's something that requires trust because other websites need to trust your website to be able to link to your website. So your backlink profile and your authority and all those elements you just can't generate with AI, they will also continue to be super important in, in the coming years. Got you. And so where can people find you online? I'm uh, on Twitter or X as it's called now. That's where I'm most active. And then I have a YouTube channel where I talk about SEO and review SEO tools as well. So that's uh, where you can find me on, on my name. And any final thoughts for our listeners? No, just uh, keep, keep trying, even though SEO can be a hassle sometimes. Just keep trying because you will eventually figure it out. I'm sure of it. All right. Thank you, Philip, for joining the Digital Coffee Marketing Brand sharing knowledge on SEO. Thank you for having me. And thank you for listening. As always, please subscribe to Digital Copy Marketing Brew on all your favorite podcasting apps. And guys, see you next time when we talk to another great thought leader in the PR industry. All right, guys, stay safe and understand your SEO and how to make your website better. We'll see you next time. Later. <laughs>